I'm not the best singer because I haven't practiced my voice, and I'm not the best、um, craftsperson. Like I cannot fold paper in a certain way because I haven't practiced it. But if I put my、um, like my mind behind it or to it, I I can learn that and just takes time and. I think as creatives, we need to know that if we practice something for a long time, we can actually achieve anything. This is the Hillsong Creative Podcast, where we hear from creative experts and influencers, the dreamers and the doers. What they've learnt and what we can learn from their journey as we explore, respond, and create. I'm Rich Langton, and on today's episode, we have Stefan Kunz. He was a banker, and now he's a lettering artist, traveling the world, working with brands like Adobe and Apple. So welcome to the podcast. If you're new around here,、uh, we're going to have lots of fun. We're going to interview all sorts of people, from artists to preachers to communicators to painters to, you know, you name it, creatives and people that probably don't think they're creative. But we're going to talk about the creative process. It's going to be fun.、Uh, on today's episode, though, we've got a lettering artist, Stefan Kunz. He's a guy that was working in the banking industry, you know, out there just doing life and.、Um, Really, God got a hold of him, and now he's a lettering artist. He、um, travels the world teaching how to do typography and lettering. He works with all sorts of big brands, brands that you would know, Apple and Adobe and the like. But really, the interview today is, is it, it'll share his story and how he went from living a life in the corporate world to living a life really serving God and trying to be a child of God. And I love how he puts that. You're going to love the interview. It happened at our worship and creative conference. Annie Garrett, one of our worship pastors, is the interviewer. So we're going to jump straight in. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, Stefan, how would you describe yourself in one sentence? How long can the sentence be? It can be a very <laughs> long sentence. It can be as as long or short as you want it. Okay.、Um, It's always difficult because you have to find out like which s- things you're supposed to say, like not supposed to say. Like I know that I'm a child of God, and so that's who I am, which is right. Good answer, <laughs> but、um, and I don't like to just narrow it down to just a few words.、Right. So like keep it short.、Um, but I'm a creative、mm-hmm. by heart, and and I love people that are around me and just help people. Get better at what they do,、yeah. like find their passion. Awesome. I, d- I don't know how to no, say that. No, that's it. That's who you are. I love it. Okay, so talk to me about typography because this is something that it may have been around for a long time, but somebody like me, I've only heard about it recently. So,、mm. can you tell me a little bit about what it is? Okay, so typography actually typography is is like the setting of words, like letters, how they are in a font. Then there's calligraphy, which is like、uh, exact writing to to write with a pen that has like a brush tip or just like a fine tip that just goes bigger and smaller, the depending on the pressure you set on it. And then lettering is is basically what I do, or mostly what I do is is drawing words、um, and then setting them together like in a different way, and then just combining them, making it look pretty. And so this is what I've kind of been doing the last four years. Just、um, learning that craft and just developing my skills,、mm-hmm. and and steward that, and just write whatever I get to write on whatever surface I get to write it to. And why do you think now? Because it's becoming really popular, right? So now it's been around, but、yeah. suddenly people have discovered it. Why? Do, what do you think is it about it that's like attracting people to that? The I think the element of of sitting down, of actually using your hand instead of your computer or writing、right. to something. Is amazing, and I've seen, especially women、um, doing it. So this is actually that I'm a male doing that is、yeah. is actually a little bit rare,、um, but people find like beauty in like crafting something like art, scrapbooks, or or, or doodling, sketching, or something,、mm-hmm. and you always love to write something. So 
people love to to put like a little bit of decoration around their house and then just write like encouraging words, uh, positive words, or or just even a happy birthday card. Just mm -hmm. like you have to write it or you have to get a card. And it's more special if you do it by your hand like yourself. So that's why I think people love it at the moment because it's this sense of you create something yourself right? and you can give it and it has a bigger meaning than just buying it in stores. Yeah. Okay, so I have the worst handwriting maybe on earth. And my children, when I write them cards, say, I can't even read what you wrote. So that's just to give you a little bit of a context. I use my phone for everything. Yeah. So I make lists on my phone. I don't. I find that when I go to actually write something, I don't write well because... I don't do it that often. What do you, like technology helps us a lot. It can help us in creativity, but do you think, because everything's so quick, do you think it hinders us as well? Or what do you think? No, I think technology um, helps us advance actually faster. Right. So um, even though I, I draw it by hand, yeah. like everything I do, mostly I draw it on the iPad or just any, like any device. So I've okay. been drawing digitally for a long time. Um, But the, the 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 fact that I'm drawing is it's I'm not writing I'm drawing. Right. So if I'd be an illustrator, um, you wouldn't compare yourself with me in the sense of just drawing and writing, because your hand like your um, your handwriting is something different than your lettering. Right. Because it's because art. people exactly if if I would write something like I've practiced my handwriting a lot so that I can be faster and still look precise. Right. But um, for anyone else, they don't practice that. And practice makes perfect. So this is exactly where I say, like, I, I get that a lot that people say, like, I have the worst handwriting. Um, I cannot do that. And then I have to go back and tell them, like, well, drawing is 95% learnable. That's, that's a fact that people have, like, researchers have said. Really? So people say that they're, they cannot draw or they cannot do that is mostly because they haven't done it. Mm -hmm. And if you look at my childhood, like up to now, like I've been drawing all my life and I've been looking at stuff visually and, and been impacted by what's around me because I've been paying attention yeah. and because I've been practicing it. And the same way is like, I'm not the best singer because I haven't practiced my voice yeah. and I'm not the best, um, like, I don't know, like crafts person, like I cannot fold paper in a certain way because I haven't practiced it. Yeah. But if I put my, um, like my mind behind it or to it, I, I can learn that and just takes time. And I think as creatives or even as not creatives, we need to know that if we, like, if we practice something for a long time, um, we can actually achieve anything. This yeah. is why I struggle with the question, like, um, what job would I be bad at is, I don't know, because there are certain jobs I haven't done. There are certain right. jobs that I would would find boring. Like I've worked at a bank for three and a half years and but I can do it. Mm -hmm. And I always like as soon as I do something, I want to be the best at it. And so I don't have a vision for my life where like I really want to to be the best songwriter ever. But I have this I I take what is in front of me and I want to just do that as yeah. best as I can. So, yeah, there's a whole thing behind it. Yeah. Okay, so if I were to look you up on Instagram, which I will do after this, you have over 200,000 followers. I do. Right. So can you, and so you're known for your lettering, and you have recently worked with Apple, Adobe, yeah. Hallmark. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back two years ago. Yeah. Would you have imagined that you, then, what you'd be doing now? So two years ago, like I just, started out being like independent uh working for myself mm -hmm. so i quit my job at the bank um i didn't know what you were at a bank two years ago yeah wow okay i i didn't know what i would do after that yeah and so i asked god is it okay if i quit and god said like i had this feeling like yeah it's okay and and i asked god like what's the next chapter like what mm. what am i going to do and he didn't give me a def definitive answer so he's like Just use whatever you can, um, whatever you have, like use that and and make the best out of it. Mm. So I I went actually went through my my room and my apartment and like just prayed over everything that I had, like over my camera gear, over my computer, over uh, whatever I had. Just prayed over it and just like okay, this God use that like my talents, my gifts, everything that I knew that I had. I tried to to put bring that before God and say like this is yours, mm. and I want to do the best of it. And at that time, I actually thought that I would become a photographer rather than lettering artist. So lettering was more like a, a hobby yeah. um, and just something like my creative output or outlet on Instagram. 
And and then half a year later, God called me to do, or told me he wants me to become a, um, a brand manager for his kingdom. And I'm like, what? what's that? I don't know exactly what that is, but I think it entails to become a designer. Right. And so when I heard that, when I thought that I would become a designer, I was like, God, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to be designing, doing graphic design for the rest of my life. Like, I hate it. And I really hated really? it because I had to work with clients. I had to change stuff. I, yeah. I learned that I did the work, how I did my work was the wrong way. So that as soon as I got to the point where I like learned how to do it better, um, that completely changed. And now right. I love working with clients. Like I get to work, like, like you mentioned, the, some of the biggest brands, yeah. um, I have some, some other work coming up and, and it just, it's incre- it's crazy how far God has taken me in like the last two years. Yeah. And and I don't know where he's going to take me in the next 10. Right. But um I'm I'm ex- really like excited for for what's for what's to come. And and still like there's a love and hate relationship with the the work I do. Like some days I really love doing what I do. Yeah. And then there's some days where I just like I want to put it on side like I want to go on vacation for like two months. But then the next day I just like take a deep breath and then go back and I'm like, all right, actually I love it. Right. So was it kind of, was it, what was the transition like of this is something that I do because I enjoy it and I want to express myself to now I actually have a deadline and this is something that I I have to produce something, a product for this person. Was that hard to navigate? Um, it, it was hard to navigate at first. Um, it was like, it's like a process you, you go through. So you learn, you learn to to adapt to the situation. Um, so I've I've learned how to to come up with deadlines, like when I can end something. And deadlines actually really are helpful. Right. Um, so you end something. And I'm not a perfectionist. Okay. So I'm more. I love to be more productive, like get a lot of stuff done. But I'm still I'm still getting closer to perfection. Like the more the better you get at something, the like something when you start out, you see something as soon as it's as it's done and you're like, ah, oh, that doesn't look right. And, and you learn how to actually pinpoint what doesn't look right, but then you have to go back at it and do it over and over. Right. So pieces that I do now, sometimes, um, they get better, but they take longer as well. Mm-hmm. And, but just, it was hard at first, like the deadlines were so like so fast or I didn't actually, um, take jobs that I felt like I couldn't do Mm -hmm. because I, I thought like I was just balancing the risk of not failing at it. And like, because there, if there's money involved, you want to, you want to deliver on something. And, and if like that deadline just, um, pins you into a corner where you're like stuck and you cannot do anything, that's where you like, you have to invest into yourself before. So for me, the, the practical image of that is, like any musician practice a lot behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Like if you guys are on stage uh, singing, um, you guys have practiced so much during the week. And for designers, usually that's not the case. Designers like that work and then do it and then it's done. Yeah. And, and that's why like I, I learned that I have to actually invest. I have to practice my, my craft, my, my skills to get better that when I'm doing a job, I can perform and I'm good at it. Because it's something you've already exactly doing, right yeah. yeah i really hope that you've been enjoying this episode of the of the podcast it's brought to you by the hillsong worship and creative conference which we have here in sydney australia the conference is for people just like you and me people who are interested in creativity exploring their creativity and really growing in creativity it's not just for worship teams it's not just for artists per se but it's for all people who want to explore creativity and how they can outwork their creativity for god if you'd like more information about the conference go to our website at hillsong.com forward slash wcc i really hope you can join us now let's get back to the episode This is Zafan, and these are my Fantastic Four. The name of the um, of my last chapter in life was a hardship. It was really, it was a really tough time, and the chapter right now is kind of finding my place where God has called me to go. The last book I've read is the Bible, and the last book I bought is On the Moment. 
My favorite way to get recharged is to, that's actually also a thing that I still have to find out, but at the moment is driving. So as, as soon as I'm on the road, I just forget everything else. But everything that's just like short um, or long and that you have no access to your phone or anything, you just have to concentrate. So like snowboarding, skiing would be the same. The piece of work I'm most satisfied with is the next one that I'm going to do. Okay, so you've got classes on your website. Yeah. What's the difference between creating and then teaching creativity? How do you teach creativity? How do you teach somebody that? I think as soon as you're able to, to actually figure out your own process, um, the way you learn something and the way you create something, you can actually start teaching it. So um, like a teacher, what he has to do is to figure out something that's complicated and make it simple mm. and and for me that's that's something that I love like I'm 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 analyzing so much of what I do and how I do things so I've revisit the stuff that I do over and over again and I ask myself like why did I do that like yeah. and and can I do it better is there a better way to do it and I love to be more efficient I love to to figure out ways to to actually t teach that and at my old church um I led a creative team. Like I started out uh, building a creative team from zero, um, and over four years, I built it up to 30 people. And wow. every one of them that came into my team, most of, well, almost every one of them, like I had to teach them from scratch whatever they had to do. And so I learned like how can I teach graphic design? How can I actually break down the steps so that they can actually learn something? So you cannot just teach them like this is a piece that I want you to do and you need to do this this is this and then explain that all but you need to t teach them about the tools you need to teach them about right. how they actually can get inspired themselves and so I've um, always been teaching about like four steps of creativity or like my creative process is is broken down to four steps is where you you learn it um, or you get inspired you go on Pinterest you go to um, galleries whatever mm -hmm. and you you capture that you you learn like you take that in and the better stuff you look at, the better your inspiration is going to be, like the better your stuff is going to be as well. Yeah. And and then the second step is actually copy and learn from that. So you actually copy their work. Um, like Picasso, they he mastered other crafts um, and he like every brush soak that he made, like he copied that from someone else and then created his own style. So this, yeah. the third step is creating your, your own style. Um, and, and actually create pieces and do a lot. And then for me, the last step, and that's an essential step and it can be applied to anything you actually do is, is one more step. Um, do just go one more step is when you're done with something, um, just try to go one more step. Like if you're, uh, doing a song, like just try to end it with a different, like different way. Or for me, when I do a painting, like adding some strokes, adding an effect, adding, adding one more piece that I feel like I've never tried. Yeah. And then I see if it works or if it doesn't work. It's more difficult if you're doing a mural where you're actually painting on a, on a wall and then adding one more step and you figure out like afterwards, like, ah, oh, that actually doesn't work. That's, that's not the best way to go. So yeah. that's where I use an iPad just to digitalize it. And, but I always try to go one more step, not 10, not five, but just one more. And is that just to push yourself or see if there's more? Usually it's like so many times you just you're not sure if there's actually another step like right. can it get any better mm -hmm. and and you're like um I don't think it can get any better and that's when as as soon as you get there is like ah, I don't think it can get any better yeah. then you're done like you're not going to learn anymore or it will take a long time till you see something that you're like oh actually that could help right but if you're not like uh, visually where you can just like oh this is actually good this is where i can can go um then you need to uh actually try it yourself and and experimenting is like sometimes you learn sometimes you fail um well that's no sometimes you you get something sometimes you win and sometimes you learn mm -hmm. and you don't fail because you actually tr uh, tried something out and you learn something from that I love that. I love that you actually have like a four step yeah. process because I think sometimes when you talk about creativity, everyone has a different process, but I think it's helpful for people yeah. that want to develop and grow to actually have something that they can grab onto and apply. And I don't know that it's easy for creatives to always articulate what that I, I don't think looks it is. Like, that's, so. that's, that's what differentiate a lot of artists. Like yeah. if, 
I, I just read that or I heard that on um, on a show is like somebody talking about like if you want to apply for a creative job, you have to set yourself up from from everyone else. Mm. And he was talking like he's the city uh, bank uh, design director and has a huge list of like great stuff he did. And he said like if he has uh, someone interviewing for him and wants to apply for a job, like he wants to know like what does your creative process look like? Yeah. And then people are like, well, I don't know. I just create stuff. Yeah. And it's like, oh, cool. Next one. <laughs> yeah. So that's where I I wanted to know it for myself. And I like speaking at like uh, places like Apple and, and yeah. Hallmark, you need to teach people something. Yeah. And so you have to break it down. You have to figure it out. And and that's over the time, over the course of the last, I don't know, six months, I, I kind of narrowed it down. And for the online classes that I did, I also had to like, okay, this is actually what I do how can I teach that? Yeah. And, and then it's hard because you're also giving away everything, you know, for a price sometimes. Um, but then again, it's just like, if we help make other people better, like you'll get better as well. Like you're still the person that had to learn to get there. So even if you're teaching, even if you're sharing all your secrets, you'll still be like a little bit ahead of everyone else. Okay. So your craft is all about communicating a message, right? So, when you think about legacy, what would you like the legacy of your craft to be? What would you like it to say? That's a question of what does your tombstone going to say, <laughs> right? Um, I'm still figuring that out. I like, if, if you'd ask me, like, what's my f- next five years looks like or 10 years, or like, what's my goal or my vision? It's hard because I, I feel like I don't have one, mm-hmm. but... I know it's okay because I know that um, like I always want to do more. I want to push myself. I want to push mm. my boundaries, my limits. I always want to reach more. So like it's great that I've been able to do stuff for, for these companies like Apple, uh, Hallmark and others. But I want to do more. Okay. I want to like, I don't know. I, I want to dream bigger in the sense of I want to have maybe my, my work on Coca-Cola bottles. I want my work on... Yeah on the biggest like uh, advertising platforms like t- um, Times Square like no boundaries but yeah. at the same time I want the message that I do like that's all about my work is I want to to inspire people I mm. want to have them to read something positive that that, that will encourage them so I'm inspiring and encourage people yeah and it's been from the beginning from where I started out and I didn't know like it was such a small beginning at the time like I was still doing like graphic design on my phone like I started out before I did lettering I started out on my phone designing on my phone and that was just like a pastime like walking to my job and then just in that time just trying to create something Mm -hmm. and at that time I already had to think of like what do I want to share what do I share people and I had less than thousand people following me at that time Mm -hmm. so it wasn't like oh I have this this obligation this this um this thing that I have to do but I uh, I decide then that I want to share something that's that's true, that's helpful, um, and the only new the only thing that I knew was true was like Bible verses, mm. and and even worship songs. It's like okay, somebody looked at those worship songs, somebody like went through it and knows that like the meaning behind it is true, mm. um, and for me that was was important. And I didn't want like have like everyone not everyone who wanders is lost. It's like a sentence is like so overused. And just like doesn't really mean anything um, and not nothing that I want to share. So there are things that I'm sharing that just I think it's fun and just helps me again, just do something creative. But then there are a lot of things that I want to share is like I want to share something that's in- inspiring and encouraging um, because now it affects a lot of people. A lot of people will see it. A lot of people uh, will read it and it may change the course of their day. Right. And and I've heard so many stories of how God used my work to inspire others. And that's what I want to be doing for the progress rest of my yeah. life. So it's the same hope that you've always had. You've just got a bigger reach yeah. now, don't you? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for thank chatting. It's been awesome. And I've learned stuff. I've got four steps to work on. So <laughs> thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Well, what a great interview from Stefan. I've certainly found it inspirational and I really hope that you have too. Not being a lettering artist and knowing how hard it is to actually do what he does, it's pretty inspirational to see where he's come from and really where God is taking him. 
Uh, if you are a lettering artist and you want to do some of his courses or want to find out more about Stefan, you can go to his website, which is at typoxphoto.com. Or, of course, you can follow him on Instagram, which is just his name, which is Stefan Kunz on Instagram. So check it out. It's a great feed to follow. You actually don't want to miss next episode with Pastor Charles Neiman. We had this awesome chat about his whole creative process, as well as that, how he stayed fresh for over 40 years. He's been preaching, he's been writing, he's been leading for that long, and he still manages to come up with fresh new ways of sharing the gospel and of communicating in ways that actually help people to see Jesus. On Food for Thought, you're going to hear from our team and some short thoughts and wisdom, and we hope they inspire you. Today, though, we've got Annie Garrett, who you've just been listening to with Stefan. So here's Annie's Food for Thought. Anytime I lead, it's never familiar, and it's always every time like, oh God, I need you to help me. I need you to help me lead people into your presence. And um, a cool thing I heard, I think Robert Ferguson, who's a pastor at our church, he explains like the anointing um, as being smeared with God's ability. And so that's become my thing that it's like, just pray, I ask for you, like anoint me afresh right now for the service that I need to lead. Smear me with your ability, like you empower me to do what you want me to do. Thanks for joining us on this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you got something from it. If you did, you can subscribe on iTunes or you can find us on YouTube. And I hope you can join us next time.